And what I usually do, like I've said before, is I just get some spare wire I have laying around and strip the sheathing, the shielding off of it. At a certain point, it becomes a little easier to just pull it off the other way. And there we have it. All right, so what I will do here is I'm going to look at this first, um, the first four of these are all jumpered together because they are part of the inbound power. So I just have to connect power to one of them. I also did drill two holes because in the initial one that uh, that uh, Slucky had done for me, he showed two there, but then I realized at the time he was thinking both A and center tap would come here. That's incorrect. A and center tap are off the board and B comes in here. So I don't really need both of them, but that's all right. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a workable situation. So, um, and then one of the things that I like to do with this, and I learned this from Doug Hoffman, is to really, if you're, if you've got, if you've got the uh, time and inclination, instead of just wrapping it once, when you're going over multiples, you can wrap it around twice like that, and that gives me a kind of extra amount of coverage. And then you can just slot them down to the bottom, and then I'll be able to solder that. Um, and I'll just kind of, you know, I've got to keep following through and watching. There will be another, th these two are going to be so jumpered, so. And this is one of those processes that takes a little time, but it's very important that you don't miss anything on this either. Because if you do, you're going to have a board that doesn't work. Because something somewhere is connected wrong or not connected that needs to be connected, etc. So. have to be careful when I am connecting that wire. I'll try to show you maybe if I can with this. If I'm not careful and I'm connecting this like this and I don't watch what I'm doing, say this was the wire, if that, that looks actually pretty good. Uh, I don't know how visible that is, but I'm not, the, that grounding wire is underneath this wire and so I'm safe. Uh, there's basically insulation shielding it, but if I accidentally touch a grounding wire there, then I've got some troubles. So. All right, my battery died part way into that, but that's okay. So you'll be able to get a little bit of it. Uh, so yeah, I've got uh, I've got this all uh, all of the jumpers are wired now. Uh, hopefully that. Let me kind of turn this this way instead so that it fits the full screen. Uh, and people can you know I'll try and hold that. So I might even pause it for about five or ten seconds so people can take a look and compare if they want to. But uh, That is now jumpered that way, and on the back side, I've got it all wired up here as well. Uh, and I soldered down these guys without thinking. And like I told you before, I, I'm trying new techniques out. One of them is supposed to be that I'm supposed to get this guy and uh, hook it in with these wires that I started. I took them off because they were just getting in my way when I was trying to do this other jumpering part. But um, so yeah, I I'm I'm definitely getting used to this new way of doing things, but I think it will work out better in the long run. So that is done. I will be going back through over the next few days. I'm kind of worn out for tonight, probably. But over the next few days, I'm going to be connecting the, um, ah, come on. I'm going to be connecting the, sorry. connecting all of the wires. I'm going to be connecting the 
uh, components in and getting the board populated. So it's this is a big, big um, kind of fun but but difficult build as I've mentioned. This is a brand new idea for me of doing this much on one board, but uh, I'll get there. So I think I might even now that I've got the soldering iron just for my kind of my own practice and to show you guys while I'm at this, I might just quickly solder these guys. So they will be on and visible, but they can't wiggle loose or come off and do funny things. See, I just actually knocked two of them off trying to get this one on. It's definitely a skill that I'm going to have to learn. Um, but And I've got this one now kind of all warped funny because I was trying to take it off. Ah, oh, there we go. That's better. So, um, let's quickly, I'll quickly solder these guys on now and... And then we'll go from there. But uh, I think that's about all I'm going to get done today. It's been a busy day, but I'm uh, worn out. I'm going to go out on the town, have some fun tonight. So you guys enjoy your viewing of uh, this video and tell me what you think. I'll uh, keep the build going and keep you up to date on how it's coming. So I don't have my vent here, which I should. But uh, if my wife catches me, she'll uh, beat me. But that's okay. I'll survive, I'm sure. Um, so let me know what you think of how this is progressing. Let me know if you think I'm getting into too much detail for you guys. One of the tips that I learned on soldering is you want to get your tip wet with the solder before you come put it on because it will flow better at that point. So, and there we have it. Those are all now done. Although it looks like I didn't get a really good smooth solder there. So let's make sure I get a little bit more solder in that. And if you put the solder, if you have a good, the tip has got a good amount of wet solder on it, and you flow the solder in from the opposite side of the turret, and it's flowing well, you know you've gotten the good solder connection that you wanted. So there's my four power lines that will go to my four power tubes. I'll get the B point connecting at this end, and I have four resistors. That are high watt. Uh, I think they're 100 k, but I don't remember off the top of my head. We can look that up at any point. Uh, but this uh, this little uh, video is uh, pretty much at its close. So uh, next phase, as I mentioned, is going to be to connect all these wires and to connect in all the components. I think I'll probably put the components in next, and then carefully be able to kind of put in the wires. And as I put a wire in, I'll solder quickly onto it and the point in, so that then I don't have to worry. Like these are now in in pretty stable, and I can see where they're at and run them to where they go. So like this this close guy here is going to go straight to the very close socket that will be very close, but then this last one had to go to one that was quite a bit further away. In fact, we can pull this over, and in theory it'll look about like this. So this one will connect over to one of these pins. This one will connect to one of these pins. This one will connect to one of those pins, and this one, oh yeah, look, that's actually bad news. Look, I will probably have to desolder that and redo it. I'm a little bit short on that last one. This one looks like it should reach any of the pins, but this guy does not. So that's all right. I'll be able to use that wire somewhere else. And uh, as always, you learn as you go and you recut the wire and you redo it. But uh, there you have it. Okay, hello everybody. Today, I'm going to start populating components on the board. And one thing I got today, if you can see those, are some little tools to help me make components line up correctly. Uh, that's one of the things that I've uh, not had in the past, and a lot of mine look a little squirrely. So I've seen a lot of guys that have really nice looking layouts, so I've got to uh, give this a try. So I have to figure out, obviously, where exactly I, the sizing of this is going to be if I can. So some of these are too big, I guess. We'll see. Like So that's even that's too big. So, um, so for the really big guy like this, it's going to be um, hard for me to get uh, a component as, this, as big as this on there. But uh, these definitely fit, you know, most of the other sized ones. Uh, like even this end here, I can at least put, if you can see that guy. So we'll, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go through this one. Obviously, then I'm going to have to kind of fit manually. Um, but uh, I can give myself at least an estimation by, you know, finding the point on the lead where I want it to bend and bending one of them. The big guys like this don't matter as much anyway. Uh, but... Uh, uh, the, the the smaller ones, resistors and the small caps and whatnot, those will look a lot nicer if I can do that. So 
Um, so yeah, the and, and you have to also make sure you're looking at that polarity and whatnot. The way I've got this board laid out and I'm looking at my schematic, or I mean my layout design, it shows the grounding buses up here and you can even see a lot of that those grounding lines that I put on in the other video. So that means I need to have the dimple as the positive end on this kind of a capacitor. And then the uh, negative end goes that way. Another thing that is important to do that I just did wrong already is it's really good to lay these out so that you can see right on the top what the capacitance and voltage are. So if somebody's wanting to do a replacement and repair, they can actually just order it ahead of time even before even taking things apart. So uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, effectively set that guy up like this, which means I want to bend it about there. So, so we get our bend, take a look, and it looks like already I'm a little tight, so I'll probably redo that bend. But this is the part that can be a little tricky if, you, if you're not careful, you can end up with stuff looking funky. So let's see how that turned out. So the manual bends for me are a little tricky. I would rather use, but that looks like that lined up pretty well. Again, on this one, I've got an underboard jumper going on. So that means I'm a little tight and getting the second line in is gonna be fun, but I'll get it. No, it's gonna bend on me. Um, I actually might need to do the old, um, because I've got the underboard wire here, I may have to just wrap this one around because otherwise it's not going to connect well. Um, so I'll do that I think. So I'll kind of carefully wrap it and then once I've got the wrap done I can you know solder it in. Again the turrets do make this easier but they don't make it completely flawless so you have to be uh, able to adapt a little as, as, you, as needed in these kinds of situations. So I have now wired that guy pretty well. And the good thing about this one, honestly, is the um, what I also will do is you know that you need only a little bit of this down. So I'm going to come down about as far as I need and cut that so that I can then just kind of carefully slide that in. And now we're done. Um, I have been doing this for a while and I still kind of find ways to make things a little better each time I try. But that guy's now in place and as you can see I've put it so that the uh, capacitance reading and the voltage rating are listed here and you can also see that negative pointing down here to the negative grounding side. Um, also on this one I've got a couple of 16 microfarad and a couple of 8 microfarad. The 16 go out on the power section so those will be down here. I'll just put them in the chassis uh, I'm, my plan is to kind of super glue those to the chassis so that there's no way that the wires can touch. I'll connect these up to a grounding bus somewhere. Oh, that's off, off screen. Sorry, let me come over here. I'm going to glue these down to the chassis. These will then come up off into the grounding bus. And then these wires here will connect in. Uh, one of them, as I recall, actually connects in here. So I might actually do one of the things I do that Doug has shown me is I tend to wire things in like this. And then you can see it'll kind of shoot off and connect into the wiring bus, the grounding bus there. That way there's nice stability. It's locked in at the turret and locked in at the grounding bus, which also won't move, and you have a nice stable cap. It's fairly easy to replace them as well. But I do have need for these two 8 microfarad capacitors that go in. Uh, looking at this, they go in, it looks like here and here. Yes, that's correct. So those, again, I'm going to set them up so that I can see the capacitance rating and voltage rating on the top. And that guy. So once I get one of the the bends in right, that one didn't work out right. So I just get the first bend done the way I like it, and then once that's done, I can come back and adjust the second one. So that's pretty good. I will get the second one off of that point. And for these really big ones, it's not as as difficult to deal with as it is for the smaller ones to make them look good because there's such a short amount of lead that's visible. But you do want to get them. Okay, so there you go. That's that's looking good. And you can see right here on this side. Oh, no. See, I get it again. The capacitance rating is rolled off. So I've got to straighten that out and try and bend it down this way. Same thing here. Let's see if that looks better. And you also don't want to bend your leads too often because you can weaken them and break them if you bend them too often. All right, so that's a little tight, which means uh, I need to move that just a little bit. Oh, I did that the wrong way, I think. Now it's going to be even tighter. Yeah, so I need these to be a little, just a slight amount closer. Oh, 
All right, perfect. So those go in good, but of course now I've got those hanging out the bottom. So you can just come down here and snip them at the base if you want. But then you also intend to have a little bit of stuff hanging off the end. I prefer to cut them a little bit differently usually. More, more often what I do is I measure the right idea and then I cut and then I put it back in again. So. Okay, that looks, now they look a little bit more in the same ballpark. So, what I'll do with that guy instead is cut just a little bit down to where I think the length of the turret is. So we get good length out of it and it gets good solder connection, but I'm not clipping it out the bottom. I'm leaving a little left over there. So, oh, actually, I cut that one a little bit out. So my technique there is not as good as I think it is. Maybe that is a little bit better way. Anyway, anybody has suggestions on that that's the best way to cut those, let me know. Um, so now I just wanted to show the big caps. Those are obvious. Uh, I also have a very big um, power resistor. That's gonna, This is the, uh, for the power output tube, this is the cathode resistor. Um, this one, sometimes when you're in a, you know, particular tubes will tend to be on average different. So a particular set. Because this is a cathode bias that is self-biasing, you don't need to quote unquote bias it. But you do sometimes as the, you know, if you have a severely variant set of uh, tubes put in or something to that effect, you end up needing to adjust. But for this guy, there's the, the estimated value would be a 30 ohm resistor. Um, or a 50 ohm or somewhere in that range. This one looks like it was a 30 ohm. And it might be, it says 50 ohm on here, but that might have been the 15 for the four or for the two. This is for four. But at any rate, I have other large watt resistors and you sometimes have to adjust this anyway as you go. So I'm going to quickly get that guy locked into place. Actually, this let's try this technique. I just had an idea. Right now I can see where that will be. If I get my pliers on it, I might be able to just bend on that point and see what we get. Let's look at that, see how that worked. No, nope, that was a little too far. Probably what I did was went to the wrong side of the pliers. And this looks like it's a little, yep, perfect fit. Okay, so again, I'm going to snip. And go from there. So I'll be continuing the process. I'm going to end up filming this, but I, I just wanted to show you a couple of the basics of what I'm doing. And then we'll just kind of continue going from there showing you know, I won't explain everything I'm doing, but you'll see it. I'll start using this to kind of measure a spot and then and bend my leads there and you'll see how it progresses.